Um, I thought it would be good just to go through the principles of, well, how do you, well, there's so many animals. I mean, if, you know, if you go to a, a dictionary or an encyclopedia of animals, um, there, there are so many different ones. We'll cover as many as we can, but we can't cover all of the, the animals in the world because it's just way, way too many of them. So it's good to then talk about, well, okay, if you get an animal that we haven't spoken about in a dream, how do you um, how do you go about understanding that? And also, if you have a very specific animal, one of the um, because you often see specifics in a dream. You you may um, you may see a so, so, say you may see um, a bird, but you're not actually just seeing a bird. You're going to be seeing a blackbird or a sparrow or a robin or a woodpecker. Or well, my favourite is the budgie. Or the, the budgie. But even if you are, are seeing one of those birds, then well maybe you're seeing like, um, uh, maybe you're seeing an English budgie, maybe you're seeing a, a wild Australian budgie, maybe you're seeing a certain type of woodpecker, and we'll come to that one later. That's a good and dream. And so it's, it's why this thing and not that thing. And um, the, the, how do you work, then work through the specifics? So, so here we go, some principles on how do we uh, understand what animals might mean in our dreams. One of the best principles is that, because we draw our source of authority from uh, the Word of God, is in the Mosaic Law, the way God thinks about animals in his expression of it to, um, to Moses and, and to is Israel, is um, there are animals that are clean and there are animals that are unclean. And a good principle is often that an unclean animal is often a negative symbol in a dream. There are always exceptions to that rule, um, which is why you need to really hear from God as to what that dream symbol means. But in general, if a, um, an animal is unclean in the Mosaic law, it's a negative dream symbol. So what would that be? That would be kind of like reptiles, um, snakes, scorpions, um, bugs, flies. Um, uh, what, what else? Well, interestingly, um, when you think about animals and bugs, um, in the instance of most, all insects in the Mosaic Law are forbidden, except for locusts. So um, I found that quite interesting. I think, was that in um, something 11? And numbers? No, Leviticus. Leviticus 11. Leviticus 11. So it's quite interesting that um, the Mosaic Law is quite an interesting way to look at whether an animal's clean or an unclean animal yeah yeah um so that's one way of looking at it and if it's a if it's a clean animal so if it's a, a sort of um a cow or um, a, a mammal or uh, a fish for instance then often they have a good meaning now it's not always the case um, but it's a good general principle to start with clean or unclean can kind of key you into the meaning but there are exceptions and context is always going to give you very important the, uh, uh, the, uh, um, the, the best steer as to what what the thing means and always asking the holy spirit saying what are you saying yeah holy spirit and this is one of the principles we always come back to is when we've had a dream i recently like on saturday evening i had a dream about a whole lot of animals um, and I, I still can't understand. It's a whole lot of birds, and um, it wasn't a bird that I'd actually recognised. And so, it's not I even had, a bird that exists. Is I'm it? not even <laughs> sure it is a bird that exists. So I had to, I had to say, Holy Spirit, what is this? And actually, still we don't know. So I've written it in my, um, my app, and I'm kind of sitting on it. And I know that God often has a way where um, the meaning of things will emerge at a later stage. So that's always a good principle. Write it down. If you don't know what it is, if you don't know where it's from, just write it down and usually um, ask the Holy, well, always ask the Holy Spirit, but usually the Holy Spirit will show you, maybe not on the same day, mm. but he will eventually show you what exactly um, that element or that animal would be. Mm -hmm. um, another good question to ask is, um, uh, like, kind of what's the design or, or of this animal? You know, what did God have in mind when he created this animal and what... Um, uh, what kind of place in the in the general uh, ecosystem in life does it it, um, it it take? So, for instance, the lion is sort of the he's the king of the jungle. The lion is the the, the, the ruler, is, uh, and it, culturally, you see the lion that that way. He, he um, if you think about a movie like The Lion King, or um, then he their lions rule over the plains. Um, Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah. There's always been a theme of royalty and rulership about, about lions. And, and they are the top of the food chain in their environments almost always. 
um, whales that are like defined by their size usually I mean they're enormous they're one of the biggest but probably the biggest creature on earth so a, a whale is a big thing if you see a whale in a dream it's not going to be a small thing whatever it is uh, what, whatever issue it represents it's going to be something that's really really big so um, you think about a shark what's a shark defined by well usually it's teeth you know in the modern era uh, a sh sharks are defined by the movie in popular consciousness jaws has a huge influence over how we think about sharks and it's all about the rows of teeth and the bite so jaws is uh, if you see sharks um, they live in the water which is spirit and they're kind of defined by their ability to bite and they're dangerous so there's something that's quite dangerous so thinking about the defining characteristics of animals often helps you to think about their meaning as well um, and then there's cultural associations, that's the third thing. So if the first thing is clean or unclean, the second thing is, well, where are they in the ecosystem? What defines them? The third thing might be the culture, a cultural association with a particular animal. How do we talk about it in language? So think about phrases like the elephant in the room. If you're in a room and you see an elephant, the elephant in the room means there's a very large issue in this space which nobody's talking about. So the elephant in the room is something we all know is there, we all know we need to talk about, but nobody wants to because we don't know how to and we're afraid of it. But also an elephant in, um, uh, in, in the right context, so if you see an elephant in the African savannah in your dream and they've been communal, then that's a good sign because, I mean, obviously I grew up culturally South African or African, so I've been to, I've seen all the different African animals and they mean a different thing to me than they would to you or even somebody in Australia. So that's also a cultural association is what does that, that animal mean to you within the culture that you were born in and grew up in? So, I mean, a snake for me is like, I'm, I'm pretty scared of snakes and I really don't like them. I have no, um, I will not make peace with snakes and I don't like them and I'd never keep them as a pet. But um, obviously that's my association. You as an English person have not had really the, the snake association what you don't we barely get anything here in the UK that's dangerous or scary still don't like them though no <laughs> when I dream about them then normally they're not no. good things yeah but, yeah anyway so snake in the grass you were gonna so say. yeah there, so there is a um, uh, a thing where it, it is always very personal God uses your language to speak to you in dreams so take another cultural association you talk about having a whale of a time so whilst a whale may not just be a small issue it may be a big issue it could also be that if you see uh, a pod of whales and they're frolicking and because whales they, they breach and come out of the water and they look like they're playing so maybe it's talking about having a whale of a time um, and that would be a cultural association with the word whale sly as a fox snake in the grass mm. squirreled away for a rainy day mm. these aren't absolute definitions but they are definitely worth thinking about when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to thinking about what this, what a dream symbol might mean. And one I, I kind of I learned recently is squirrely. I didn't realize it was a term, but it's an American term. If you're feeling squirrely about something, so if you have a dream about a squirrel and you're feeling nervous about something, or if you're driving a car and it's squirrely, we were watching the Grand Prix yesterday, mm. the F1, and um, there was a lot of squirrely driving going on because the rain had come down yeah. and the cars couldn't get traction. So if you see your, scar your car acting squirrely in a dream, um, or you see a squirrel driving a car and <laughs> the car is squirrely... <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of a nervous, agitated state, it means, isn't it? It might mean that the thing you're, you're driving in or the, the thing you're trying to get from one place to another hasn't got traction, so... Yeah. <laughs> So I know, so those are, those are all kind of um, cultural associations and the way we talk about uh, different aspects of our lives in terms of um, language which uses animals as a metaphor and that can all be relevant in a dream and as you just said, it's culture specific. Mm. So there are American terms um, and there are English terms and there are South African terms and those animals play differing association, different, different associations yeah. in different cultures. Yeah. Um, you can also think about the colours um, with uh, animals, especially if they're unusual. If an animal um, pops up in your dream and it's not its normal colour, mm. then that is probably signifying something. Mm. Um, uh, you think about something like a bear, for instance, and this is not even an abnormal colour, um, 
there are brown bears, there are grizzly bears, and there are polar bears, and they they all would represent something different, but which often is can be based on their their colour, but can also be based on their environment and behaviour. So thinking about colours is also quite useful mm. in terms of animals, especially if it's an unusual colour. So if you get an animal in a colour that it's not supposed to be in, that's an interesting dream element and you have to say okay well if that's that animal and why is it that color because you wouldn't find that in in normal life mm. then that's often something that will just pop right out yeah like uh, an anything uh, like white so if you see a snake that's white that's like super unusual in in the natural world and that would be keying you into something about that element in the it's tree. religious lies isn't it it's usually is to, to do with religious lies mm. yeah that's right because obviously white would signify um, either purity, godliness, or religion. Yeah. And a snake. Well, we'll talk about snakes in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, colours are important. Uh, cultural associations are important. Defining characteristics and clean or unclean is important. Um, then, always ask what's going on in the dream. And um, when it comes to a symbol, having a, uh, a pet is different from um, grabbing the thing by the scruff of the neck. Having a pet rat is very different from grabbing a rat by the scruff of the neck and then throwing it away. It would be completely different meaning in, in the dream, um, even though the symbol might mean the same thing. So you have to understand what's happening in the dream um, to understand what the dream is telling you about your situation. Um, and we'll come on to some of that in, in a minute. Um, uh, one other note is if you have um, animals as pets then it's going to affect how you dream about them so we we have birds uh, little budgies so we dream about budgies it's something that speaks to a responsibility that we have and actually a kind of a care and affection we have so even though that might mean so it means something in the dream because it is still a bird and you have to add that layer in of well is this the horse that i own does it appear as a maybe a responsibility is it something that follows me around is it something i have a duty of care for in the dream so maybe it's speaking about the actual animal itself but if the dream is metaphorical how does my responsibility and care for this animal affect what the dream means it, it will um, affect the, 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 the meaning of the dream and often if you are dreaming about an animal you have care for it's usually a positive thing because you've chosen that animal and you care for that animal and you love it oh, but so, what if you have a snake as a pet and it's roaming free in your house well I bet I'm not so sure about that and I, I, I have questions about people who keep reptiles and spiders and the like um, and that would be a very contextual um, uh, for, for me um, but we had a dream like that recently about somebody who did keep snakes uh, we, we think they kept snakes as pets um, but the dream was saying that these snakes were free roaming around the house snakes almost always have a negative meaning in a dream I've and only, i'll talk about that in a, in a minute. minute i've only ever seen one dream where they may have meant something positive um, however um, the snakes in the dream were free ranging and even a person who keeps snakes as a pet, you'd never just open all the cages up and let the snakes wander around the house. Uh, I mean, I don't know any snake owner that would do that because they can be quite dangerous. Yeah. And even if it's not a dangerous snake, um, then it will just probably disappear because they're pretty good at getting into small spaces and underneath floorboards and into cavities and lofts. And they like to go hide in those spaces because they're dark dwellers. They like kind of dark spaces mm. and holes. So um, that's abnormal behaviour in the dream and that's going to say something about what's going mm. on in this person's life. The last one here, and then I'll, I'll sum up, is um, also think about are these creatures that you're dreaming about, um, do they dwell in the, the light or do they dwell in the dark? And usually it's, it's something that primarily dwells in the dark, uh, likes dark spaces, likes to hide out in the dark is going to be a negative thing and something that's is quite happy to wander around in the daylight and be in the light is, is a good thing and, and that's to do with the associations between um, like the metaphor of being brought into the light which is seen by God and in the light of God's truth and as a scriptural metaphor and the same the works we talk about the works of darkness they don't like their works being brought into the light because they'll be seen for what they are um, Jesus says so they, that primary metaphor of dark and light also applies to animals and may steer you one way or the other way, um, but it's not an absolute rule, again, it's just a general orientation. So those are good principles of um, working with different types of animal in your, in your dream.
dreams. Yeah.